All right, so now we're, get, we're getting somewhere. We got the system set up. I've got a user set up. What about managing software and getting software installed on the system? And this is one area where the next version of Solaris is going to totally change how things work. And uh, in Solaris 10, we use a file-based packaging system. So we distribute actual files, and then you use commands like package add and package info to manage those files. In the next version of Solaris, uh, we're completely changing that with a network-based, internet-based file installation mechanism. And so as an example of what I thought I would add, well, let's go over to Solaris here. Let's get out of root. I think. Yeah, so if I do, uh, I think it's base. There we go. So by the way, Star Office is the version of Open Office that's bundled. It's basically Sun's distribution of Open Office. So it's the one we bundle with Solaris. Um, it is not free. You could buy Star Office, so it comes with support. It's, it's, it's funny that we both, Open Office is, is Oracle's product, Star Office is now Oracle's product. One includes a support package, the other is purely community supported. When you buy Solaris, you get Star Office, so it's Solaris is supported, the, the Office suite is supported. And regardless, I'm just using it as an example. I ran some info, I can get info on where this package is installed. You see it's installed in the opt directory. So how do I install new software? Well, kind of a neat deal with VirtualBox is the ability to install what they call guest additions. And so right now, there's some limitations of what I can do with Solaris in my Solaris 10 in my environment. Um, and so what VirtualBox allows me to do, let's see here. Okay, they have this menu item, install guest editions. Guest editions will do things like allow me to copy and paste from the guest operating system to the host operating system, or vice versa. Extremely powerful stuff, nice stuff. It also enhances the display. Uh, if for some reason, um, I'm not running a huge display here, but if I had a larger monitor, it would not likely go to this resolu that resolution. The guest editions will allow you to do that. So it's additional software that the VirtualBox team has written for whatever operating system you're running to enhance the integration with the host. So what, oops, what we see here is I've mounted a virtual CD drive. You can see the icon on my desktop so I can And so you can see this CD actually has additions for any type of VirtualBox guest. So there's Windows, there's Linux, there's Solaris. And so I'm going to use the package add command. Uh, sorry. All right, it says, do you want to install this package? I'm like, the default is all OK. It's going to go through, and it's going to ask me a couple of more questions. Got some license information. OK, and there it's laying down all the bits. And then these guest editions. And this, again, it's just an example. This is how you would install any piece of software. If you downloaded Apache or whatever you wanted running on the system, this is essentially how you'd get it installed. In the case of the, I just thought the VirtualBox guest editions would, would be a good idea because many people don't know about them and they really make VirtualBox a better tool to use once you install them. Okay, now once they're installed, once, this isn't true of all software, but with the guest editions, and, and in order for them to take effect, you have to re just restart the, the UI, log out, log back in. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I don't think there's really anything I'm doing um, that requires me to do that. So we'll go forward. So installing software. All right, patches. 
Patches are sort of an evil necessity of working in the IT world. I talk to a lot of customers that never patch because their systems work fine. And there's the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, however, there are some critical patches that come out that should be applied. They apply some critical security fixes. Your machine you know, is potentially vulnerable to attack. And so um, it is recommended that if you can apply patches, there's a couple things I want to point you to. One is the alerts page. And so sunsolve.sun.com, Bill had this URL up on his slides. That will be transitioning to oracle or support.oracle.com, but currently it's still at the Sun site. Uh, you can go there and register to receive a weekly alert of the patches that are, are produced for Solaris. Now there's two ways you can install patches in Solaris 10. One is using an update manager. There's a little icon on my desktop here. You can see it right here. I could click this and it'll start a dialogue and it'll ask me to log in. It'll show me all the patches that are available. And I'm probably not gonna go through all that right now. Here's a snapshot of what it looks like. Um, the little blue icon indicates if a reboot would be required after installing that patch. Now, what's the problem with this approach? These, these systems are your production systems. You're running your business on them. Uh, you just don't necessarily want to go throwing patches on them and hoping that it's going to work OK, especially if you require a reboot, then there's going to be a little bit of downtime at least. And so alternatively, Solaris 10 has a feature known as Live Upgrade. And as the name implies, it allows you to patch a live system with minimal downtime. It does this by making a, a, an entire copy of what we call the boot environment, basically the core operating system. So we make a copy of your operating system, and that takes, that takes a while. Your operating system is several gigabytes, and so you need some disk space. You tell it to make the copy, and then we patch that copy. But the good news is, if there is a problem, if there is a, a bad news situation where for some reason the patch actually cause more harm than good to your system, you could revert back into the original boot environment very quickly. It's just a matter of rebooting again. So your downtime is minimized. All right, so information, on, I put the URL there at the bottom. Again, if you Google Solaris Live Upgrade, you'll find out everything you want to know about it. I'm just making you aware of it here. I don't have time to actually do a live upgrade. 